Welcome to the climb. This is a show dedicated to helping singers, songwriters, and indie artists like you create leverage in the music business. In the new music business, you're going to need leverage much more than talent. You're buying small businesses, the labels are now. The bookers are interested in what you've already been up to. Publishing companies want to know what kind of cuts you got, what kind of hits you got. Nobody's just kind of developing up the raw diamond in the rough anymore. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work like that, honestly, because it doesn't have to. That's why we called it The Climb. We're here to help you create leverage in the music business, C-L-I-M-B. That's why we exist. And the genius that came up with that is my good friend and co-host, Mr. Brent Baxter. Brent is an award-winning hit songwriter with cuts by Alan Jackson, Randy Travis, Lady Antebellum, Joe Nichols, and more. And he helps songwriters like you turn pro by revealing how you can write like a pro, do business like a pro, and then he'll actually connect you to the pros to get a whack at the, at the plate there. Find Brent very easily at songwritingpro.com. Once again, that's songwritingpro.com. And I would like to introduce you to my co-host, Johnny Dwinell. Johnny owns Daredevil Production. Daredevil has created over 25 national TV opportunities for their indie artists, and they've done this by making them discoverable. They've also created multiple tour opportunities, and through the power of digital marketing data, they've attracted a number of investors for their artists. That's right, investors are the money folks, and the money folks like numbers because numbers don't lie because numbers can't talk. And you can find Johnny at Daredevil Production. Dot com. That's production singular, no S, and there is no S because there is no other Johnny D. Hello. How you doing, brother? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I'm what excited about today? what we're talking about today and sharing some wisdom, some real world advice, and some real world music industry people. We're going to get oh, some more to straight poop. I like these. The straight poop from the poop shoot. <laughs> I don't know. That's awful. So please give us a chance. Listen. You went another place there. You took it to another down to another level. That did. That is, that, <laughs> sorry, visual. That's what I do. It ran it down. Had a publisher. Mine was folksy. <laughs> mine was folksy and down home. Right. Had a straight poop. And then, and then you pulled a Johnny and just I took did. it right into the gutter. I, I did. I did. I had a publisher <laughs> tell me one time, he's like, I can always rein you in, but I can't draw you out. So just feel free to go too far and let me rein you in. But he, he, he doesn't produce a podcast. So anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I said something like that to my wife the other day that I won't say here. And she was like, she just gave, gave me that look. I was like, sorry, I just made it up. It sounded so good. I had to say it, even though I know it's not it's not appropriate. <laughs> She's like, you hear that somewhere? I'm like, no, I just made it up just now for you. <laughs> like at that specific oh, moment, did you just feel like you were like five years old? Oh, totally. It was <laughs> a five-year-old thing that it rhymed and had a good cadence to it. But it was just like gross. I'm like, I know. <laughs> That's how I do it. It's just what we do. You have to run and you married a writer. <laughs> It doesn't have to be appropriate, but if it ha- flows well and has a nice rhyme and a little kick to it, I'm yeah. going to say it. It's going to come out. <laughs> yeah, raise your hand if you if you are that way, fellow climbers. I'm sure you are. So many of you are like, yeah, my wife looks at me or my husband looks at me that way a lot. You're just like, it was really interesting, the wording of it. So I said it. <laughs> you got to appreciate it for what it is. Yeah, no. exactly. <laughs> exactly. You got to get over the gross part. <laughs> you got to take the good with the bad. got to take the train wrecks. With the paychecks. Sweet with the bitter. Oh, the train wrecks with the paychecks. I know. (laughs) Feeds our babies, baby. Leave it alone. (laughs) Just got to take some of that (laughs) collateral damage. All right, from my mouth. All right, so today we are sharing some great advice from our June Play for Publisher event. So if you've been a longtime climber or you follow me over at songwritingpro.com or freddy.com, you know that we do these uh, quarterly play for publisher events where writers uh, from the community send in songs. We pick the, the 10 that I think have the best chance of getting our publisher's attention. And we got a pretty good bad and average of that going on. And we get together on a video conference and the publisher listens to the songs, give feedback, answer some questions. It's face to face. It's awesome. And, and so I'm just going to share some of the insights, a small sampling from the hour and a half event that we have with Joe Dan Cornette from Daywind Music. And it's going to share some of those value bombs and yeah, gonna help you on your help you on your climb. There we go. All right. But first, and by the way, by the way, like just to recap, he picks the top ten, but everybody wins because if you submit a song for that, you get to listen to the the recorded. Yeah, you get to watch the video replay. Everyone yeah. that actually you don't even have to send in a song as long as you you purchase a 
a ticket, a song submission ticket, whether or not you send in a song or not, you're on the list and, and I'll send you the replay. Some people just do that for the replay. Yeah. No intention to send in a song. I would be doing but that like I'm on every replay. Yet, I just want to watch the replay. So I'm not even going to send a song because I, I don't feel like I'm ready yet, but I just want to, I want to learn. So I write better songs. And I, mean, I straight up feel like I would do that all the time. I would do that every single one. Like I would yes. be like, oh, wh- how much of about like 10? Can I get a discount of about 10 in advance? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. You're like, no. <laughs> right. I mean, that's quality programming right there. It is. Yeah. And you, everyone that also purchases a, a song submission spot also gets a song checklist. So a way to kind of go through and kind of debug your song. Like, oh, I need to think about this. I need to think about this. So you know, everyone gets one of those as well. So everybody wins. Some people just get to meet with the publisher too. There you go. All right. I like that. So, hey, let's take care of a little business here. As always, Brent and I at the Climb Podcast are proud to partner with Disc Makers. It's a digital world out there for sure. We all know that streaming, but man, it's still hugely important. I can promise you to every daredevil artist, the physical media for, for any independent musician, it's important to our artists. It's the difference between making, like with Lonely Highway, the first time we sent them back home since they've been gone back in February, it was the difference between, I think, making five grand and 7,500 grand in two days. We got them a higher price on the show, but they, they brought a boatload of t shirts with them. That's the difference. So the, the digital royalty payments are so small that selling the hard products like CDs, vinyl, T-shirts are becoming huge income generators. Like the main thing that gets you from one place to the other. Like hopefully you make enough money from the pay the gig to, to cover the expenses, most of them. But you're going to, where you're putting money in your pocket is, is from the merch, man. Yeah, it's like, am I in the music business? No, I'm kind of in the merch business. <laughs> well, that's, and that's always been true, by the that's way. That's always been true. That, exactly. I and mean, we talked about it before that even if you're signed to a major label, you're not making money off your records. You're making money off hard ticket sales and merch. For every CD you sell at a gig, like you need roughly as an artist, like 3,000 streams to make the same amount of money as selling one CD at a gig. So that's a lot of streams. So this maker is going to help you get those CDs, DVDs, all that good stuff. So you can have it. So while your streaming is building, that's great. It's not a bad thing, but you need to sell some stuff at your shows if you want to do this for a living. So our friends at Disc Makers are the place to go for discs and other physical media, including vinyl, the USB drives that Johnny has the heart eyes about, and T-shirts. They need I love those. Some T-shirts, some swag. So it gets you in the merch business, not just the music business. And you That's can find right. them at discmakers.com. That's D-I-S-C, makers.com, or give them a call at 800-468-9353. That's 800-468-9353. There you go. Join the Climb community if you haven't done so. Got to ask to be let in, but we let everybody in. Mm -hmm. This is an active community, guys. This is a real legit community. Every single day, there's stuff being posted, not only by Brent and by myself, but by climbers that are putting in there, like all positive, inspirational, motivational, educational, ask a question, you'll get an answer kind of a thing. And it's not, it's just not your normal Facebook group. I just want to make sure everybody understands that. So we, we'd love to have you there. Come on and join. Take five seconds, leave a five-star rating and review. That helps us out. We've got a couple new ones, by the way. Nice. Subscribe button right there that you see. Like, make that happen. And then rather than having to rely on our marketing, it just automatically comes right into wherever you consume your podcasts and you can get to them at will. Mm -hmm. And I know you kind of like, if you're like me on podcasts, you take a long break and then all of a sudden you're binging Mm -hmm. for (laughs) a bunch of episodes. Uh, And then finally, the best compliment you can give Brent and I would be to share it. If, If there's an episode that you totally love, really changed your world in some way or another, please Put it up on social media. Tell people about it. Let them know. That's the big deal there. And I, you know what? We do have a do have a couple new reviews. I want to read one here. Awesome. This, this is Giver's Gain and by Plumber at Myrtle Beach. It's a five-star review. Hmm. It's very quick, very simple. It says, this podcast is awesome. Hope to meet you guys in person one day. Awesome. I hope so, too. Thank you, Plumber at Myrtle, Myrtle Beach. I love Myrtle Beach. There we go. Thank you. Thanks for the tasty five-star review. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. All right. So what are we going to learn? I'm going to bounce that out with some hate. Okay. (laughs) I think I texted you on this because it was, I got. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. This was in the Songwriting Pro Facebook group. It's also, spoiler alert, this ends in a roadhouse. (laughs) I like to do Facebook lives. I try to do them every Monday around noon and I'll kind of talk about the new blog post and and share some insights there. And I also do like Q&A for people. So if you're around 
my personal Facebook page on Mondays around noon, usually depending on my schedule. I try to do those. And anyway, so, you know, I put that up and, and, you know, share them around Facebook groups and stuff. Cause I'm like, Hey, this is like free information. I'm taking questions and stuff. So this is helpful for people. So I do that anyway. So, and I'm on Facebook later, I'm checking comments cause I try to respond to them and engage, right? Not just spray and pray or whatever. I'm here to engage. Anyway, somebody posted a uh, meme under it as a comment or a gif or gif or whatever. Uh, I think it's B. Arthur from the Golden Girls going, I could vomit just by looking at you. I was like, <laughs> nice. <"What?"> yeah. <laughs> I was like, um, I was like I quite. I'm not sure where this is coming from. Can't expand on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, ah, right, well, it was the hat. I felt pretty good about my hat game. Ha ha. <laughs> He's like, definitely not the hat. He responded. I was like, okay got a problem with something i'm saying or what anyway because i think it's kind of funny right i'm like you're not getting under my skin i'm like it's somebody just trolling me okay saying i'm ugly cool yeah. whatever yeah yeah i was like hey you should be happy though at least you're not my wife <laughs> you don't oh, have yeah. to deal with it uh, it could be worse you could be my wife and honestly i'm glad you aren't and it was some dude Anyway, he's like, yeah, and thank God I'm not one of your clients either. <laughs> yeah, oh, nice. And started going off on that. I don't know what the deal was. He didn't get into the content I was sharing. He was just like, you ugly, and I, it, would, it would suck to work with you. Yeah, and your mama, your mama's ugly too. Like, yeah. And I, there. And I was like, I'm like, so I just went up to the top. I was like, where is this? It's got to be one of those other Facebook groups. It was in my Facebook group. It was in the songwriting <laughs> program. Like, we let you into my house. Negator, yeah, and negator. Now you're on, you make me want to throw up a lot just because I don't like you. So he got roadhoused. Good for him. Did you, did you see that one I CC'd you on? Yeah, I meant to uh, try to email you back at Bounce Back. But yeah, you got some hate too. <laughs> if you're going to be hateful, try to be, be relevant fun. and hateful. Yeah, like, I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This guy came out of nowhere. It was in response to the Jimmy Eary episode. The uh -huh. one we had, this is very similar to the one we're about to get into right now. Yeah. Uh, in response to that, and because uh, song of the year, they do yeah. one song of the year, not not once but twice for the CMAs that year and the ACM yeah, song of the driver year. Truck, for, for I drive your truck. I drive your truck. Jimmy Eary was a rider. We did an episode sharing some insights that Jimmy shared with me and the and the Freddie community on one of our Know the Pro events. So we did an episode just sharing some value from this guy yeah. that has done it at the highest level. Yeah. And this guy, I get an email from this guy. It's like, it's a scam. The judges are all cooked. Is this the one? He sends me some link to link some like song of the year .org or some, .com yeah, or .scam. And he goes, is this the song? Is this the song of the year that you won? And so he's talking to me like everybody in the first person. It. Yeah. Everybody was, or you get honorable mention. It's a total scam. And the judges are, are BS and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, so man if you're gonna do that like I, I welcome all the discourse like we'll talk we'll talk about the haters and you got an opinion that's okay but try to be on the same planet when you say it i'm like first of all i'm not jimmy Geary. my <laughs> name's johnny dwinnell and i'm the co-host of this podcast called the climb <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and and for your and i just i responded to him like yeah. and i was i was snarky i'm like and by hilarious. the way so, yeah, so these CMAs and ACMs, okay, and the way they vote, blah, blah, blah. Our pro and, member, um, yeah. And they're not, the business and it's not, it's not a scam. They're broadcast on ABC and CBS. And, and there's and only then, you one know, winner a year. Yeah, with, and there's no, I promise you, there's no honorable mentions. Other than and, the other nominees. <laughs> yeah, it was ridiculous. Yeah, it's like, I really suggest you listen to the podcast because I have a feeling you did not. Yeah. And that's, that's you, by the way, that's where the, if you look at all the haters I've ever gotten, most of them, that's where they launch off of. They see something in an email and the, the title, title and they just, rather they than lie. think about it, explore it, find out if what they're I thinking mean, is right. They that just dude took more time back. to find song of the year dot scam or whatever and yeah. look up and link up that than he did. If he just listened to the intro, he would have yeah. gone, Oh, this guy. Oh, CMA and ACM. Oh, because okay. I'm like, hey, have you heard of them? Like, have, have you, you heard, heard of ABC or CBS, those networks? Because they're pretty legit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is, yeah, you so know, it was number one, like generated tons of money. And by the way, everybody that votes on these actually has to make a living in the music industry. Right. Which, and I said, I think I said something like, and by the way, I think that's really a good thing. Because if you didn't do that, you might have some crazy people out of nowhere just voting on some stupid stuff they never even listened to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hmm. Uh. So, yeah, so the guy that called me vomit inducing, I was like, by the way, on, on your way out the door, let me just give you some advice. Like, this is a group that you ask to join. It's for, you know, songwriting pros, for people, current pros and aspiring professionals in, in the music business. And 
it's not a good way to turn pro by like going into someone's house and insulting them. Yeah. So just think about that. Cause it is kind of a relationship business. So. Right. And in the insult, you oh said, God. you're not even my client. So like, what, what do you possibly have to complain about? Like, yeah. <laughs> what are you dissatisfied with my non-service for you? It is just my face. Like, listen, dude, I got a hat on and I grew a beard. I'm trying to cover it up. All right. I'm trying I'm doing the best as much I can. as I can to cover this up. Hat beard. <laughs> I should, I guess I can throw on some shades next time, get further away from the camera, but I'm <laughs> like, right, wow, gotta... just adjust your meds. Dude. He's having a bad day. He's yeah. having a bad day, but I'm like, okay, this is a teaching moment. This is not how you, yeah. how you teach uh, your moment. <laughs> turn pro. Anyway, we've wasted a lot of time on that, but it was, <laughs> it was, we had a lot of haters this week, I guess. I know they come out of the woodwork. So if you two haters, particular ones oh, that were like so super at, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's get on to the good stuff. All right. Great advice from our June Play for Publisher event with Joe Dan Cornett of Daywind Music in, in Tennessee. So these are some of the best takeaways from the evening. So these are not direct quotes, but I was taking notes as he was talking to the, the writers. And they're face-to-face on a video platform called Zoom that Johnny and I actually record this podcast on. And we can see each other. Hi, Johnny. Hey, and how you? So the, the top nice 10 hat, writers, by the way. Do what? Nice hat. Thank you. <laughs> I'm trying to cover up this mess. <laughs> I bet you get a bowl of soup up. when you get a hat like that, huh? Oh, wait, it looks good on you, though. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. Anyway, so we, we have the top 10 writers, and me and Joe Dan plays each of their songs and gives feedback on them, and then the writer can have some back and forth. You like eight minutes per song to listen, feedback, and then questions and stuff. So the whole thing takes about an hour and a half. So here's some of the stuff that he had to say. And, and also, overall, man, he really liked a lot of the songs. I mean, there were some he was like, send that to me. Do a re- rewrite. Tag Brent have him send it to me, that kind of stuff. He's like, cool. and some people he's that he knew, like it wasn't their first at bat with him. He's like, Oh, Hey, so-and-so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Send that to me. Seriously. I was like, dude, you can download it from the link I sent you. He's like, okay, I'm going to download this right now. Like this is spot on. Yeah. So we're getting real relationships being made. This next time not- you're in town, man, yeah. call me up and had the writer going, I'm coming to town. I'm like, all right, Love passing it. that along to Joe Dan. So your info. So you should, like, say, you should talk about Daywind too, just to, to give people some perspective. If they're yeah. So Daywind, normally we have like just straight country publishers on. So this one was a little bit different, which was cool. Daywind, what they specialize in is like Southern gospel and Christian music, but they also have recently opened up Billy Blue Secular, Publishing right. and Billy Blue Records, which is Bluegrass. So they just oh. like signed Doyle Lawson and Quicksilver and like legit, they already have a number ones as a Bluegrass label. Jerry Sally's running that, but they have Bluegrass Publishing, Billy Blue Publishing. They also have Billy Jack, which is Americana. So, and Joe Dan also has a guy named Hunter Leith who signed as a country writer. So they're they're getting more in country, set country co-writes and pitching there. So country and Christian, Southern Gospel, Bluegrass, Americana. So it's like really wide. That's what what a, part of what I love about them over there. That's a lot of different places to shop your song. Exactly. So I'm like, yeah, come on. So we're, you know, we had Southern Gospel, we had country, we had you know, CCM stuff all in there because Joe Dan touches all that stuff on a daily basis. So that's it's so really cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's why like, I hang out with those guys and work with them a lot because I write a lot of different stuff and they can do a lot of different stuff. So anyway, so he said, up tempo is key for commercial appeal. Big shocker there, but it's so basic. We need to talk about it. Most albums, and this is paraphrasing what Joe Dan said, most albums typically have about two ballads to eight mid or up tempos. And your catalog should re- reflect that ratio. I thought that was a good way of saying it. Your catalog needs to reflect that ratio. Meaning, we, yeah, like every album is like a microcosm of the industry. Radio of what you should be doing. Yeah. Are you writing eight mid or up tempos for every two ballads? Or is it flipped? Are you writing eight ballads, meaning slow songs, to like two up tempo? If so, your ratio is off and it's going to be hard to get a commercial you know, hit and commercial success if you're not writing most of what they're doing. It's, it's partly a numbers game. I mean, it's definitely a quality game, but it's partly a numbers game. You got to get the quality up to have a competitive song. And then part of it's find the right song that fits right in the right slot at the right time. And the more of those you have floating out there, the better your chance of success. And, and so, and, uh, hold on, let me interject. Yeah, I just want to remind everybody, we talked about this before in the podcast, but I can just hear a bunch of songwriters heads right now going, Oh, but I just, every time I write, it just comes out like a ballad. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then put a tempo to it. Exactly. Write it just, as a ballad. Just but, speed it up. And, and that's it. Like write it the way, write it like a ballad 
and then jack up the jack up the BPMs. There's been so many hits uh-huh. that have been made just doing that. If you have the courage, maybe mm-hmm. would be the right word to use yeah. to to just try it like that once and see how it sounds. You might surprise yourself. Yeah, and change up the groove in some other way. But what do we say? It's, I think it needs to be more of a catchphrase for us. Cry when you write, dance when you produce. That's right. That's right. Oh, so, like, yeah, if you need to start off writing as a ballad to get that, your emotion and that deep lyric or whatever, great. Do that. Now I'm going to go back and now I'm going to make it commercial. And now I'm going to mess with the grooves and I'm going to mess the melodies to find that lyric at home that has a better chance commercially. By the way, like artistically, what a fun that's fun. There's no yeah. sweat in the lyric or the melody. Like all that, all that heavy lifting is done and you got this like piece of work and you're like, oh, that's cool. Now let's just, let's just mix it up a little bit. Let's just, just make it something people want to hear. You can't, yeah, you can't make any wrong moves. It's like, the yeah. melody and the lyric are there. It's now it's all subjective, right? And, yeah. and everyone could win you're and just have some fun. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's just like, it's like you know, free, free and clear just to have fun. Now just, Pure unadulterated fun, like so good. Now you're like, I want to write. Th- now, yeah, I got this lyric and melody. What if I put this over a waltz? What if I put this over a samba? What if I put this over kind of a bluesy thing? What if I put this over rock and country? You know, you mm-hmm. just play with that stuff and change the vibes and see what it what it does. Yep. Core thing you've written. So, yeah. So you should be writing mostly mids and up tempos if you want commercial success. There you go. And he didn't say for a genre. No, that's just like in general. Because as I'm writing more like gospel southern gospel and stuff same thing tempo bluegrass yeah. tempo i was writing with jerry sally who runs the billy blue thing i was writing with him a couple weeks ago and he's like man tempo's so much easier to get cut i'm like it's across the board dude writing southern gospel with kenna west and jason cox is like tempo so much easier mm-hmm. to get cut country tempo so much easier to get cut knock knock who's there math math, math. <laughs> okay so it's very basic but it bears repeating because it goes against a lot of our natural grain. All right. So Joe Dan also talked about how the course of your song is prime real estate. And that's where you need to blow people's minds. Killer course. Yeah. Again, foundational, simple stuff, but simple can be hard just to remember that sometimes you, and, and I can have a tendency to do that where, and I'm trying to, and I'm growing in that area, but like if I, if I'm working on a, I've noticed recently, like I'll do my homework before co-writes and I have the stack of stuff, you know, stack of song ideas and lyrics and bits and pieces I'm bringing in. Cause I'm doing my homework. I'm a pro. I come in prepared. And so I may have this, like, yeah, I got this idea for course and it may be a little too wordy. It may just have a little too much in there, too much verbiage, mm-hmm. pretty wordy. And we're working on that. And I remember one co-write in particular with Troy Castellano mm-hmm. a few months ago. I was like, Boy, that's a, it's a cool ver- course, but Troy, I think this is actually the verse I brought in. I think I mislabeled it. And I was like, huh, because if it's a cool course, it's a killer verse, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. If it's strong enough to be a yeah, course, really strong enough to be a verse. So we moved that up there. I'm like, we just need to write a simpler course because you got the meat in here. Now we got, I mean, we you got hang on first. Now let's put some sizzle. Yeah. You know, now the chorus is going to be our sizzle, our a much less wordy, simpler. Now let's just, let's do melody and stuff and ear candy to hot the sizzle, right? We already got the steak, sizzle, baby. Nice. The sizzle. And, you know, we still got some more meat in there, but it was freed up. And so I find myself doing that sometimes, bringing in what I think is a chorus because that's like, boom, the thing. It's like, no, it's, but I can be too wordy and get too much in there. Like, boy, half of this really should go in the verse. So, and, and really trying to blow people's minds, not only with the thoughts, but melodically and ear candy wise. That's the part they need to be able to sing along with after they hear mm-hmm. it once. So it's that prime real estate. Don't skimp on the course. You don't have to get tons of stuff in there, but what's there needs to be solid and be the part. That's yep. your sales pitch, man. That's the, you're closing the deal. You're opening the door with a verse. That course got to seal the deal. And like, boom, I love this. That's great. Yep. So spend time on your courses. All right. What else we got? He said, have your idea, then stick with it. Don't let your song wander off topic. And I, you know, I had this just, I guess last night I was, I was doing a song v- feedback for a client. And so what they do is I also do song feedback. So they just email it in and I record my response to it. What I think, you know, dig it, break it apart, build it back up, email it back. So this person sent one in and it was a cool concept. I, I liked the concept. 
but they, they didn't really get into it till like line eight or nine, a couple lines mm. right before the chorus. And so it just kind of wandered. I was like, you need to stay. This is a cool concept. You just need to start right on from line one, aiming right to that concept. Like all this other stuff was kind of not really filler, but it was, it was prologue. Like it took them a little while in the process of writing to kind of dig into the meat of the concept. Yeah. And, but you got to be able to recognize that as a songwriter, like, okay, so instead of, because I just started writing here on line one and it took me to line eight to really dig in and nail down what I was saying, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you got to keep line one through seven. Exactly. <laughs> you know, like get rid of line one through seven, line eight becomes line one and now write some more. Now exactly. you're on, now you're on now track. You're, you're boom. Right yeah. there. Just like, you know, movies start off with the action scene, right? The James Bond opening thing. James Bond yeah. is tied up and he's got, to, oh, so Mr. Bond. Yeah. And then boom, big escape, big action scene. Then credits come in. Yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, Marty. You're already like, yes. It's not him driving up and getting out of the car. Beep, beep. You're locking the thing. <laughs> and up to, it's not all that stuff. Maybe stopping oh. by the grocery store on the way to MI6 and exactly. uh, getting some gas, you know, having the engine looked at, changing the oil, and then, <laughs> no. Yeah, no. <laughs> Going right in on, on <laughs> boom, drama, right? And so uh, it's funny. I had a co-write one time. You know, we're just talking in between, right? And, he, and he was telling this kind of stem wander thing. He's like, ah. Oh. He kind of laughed and said, I said all that to say this, <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> right. that's like, and sometimes we do that in our songs. I said all that to say this, like, no, just, okay, that's great for your first draft. Now that you got into it, get rid of the filler or the stuff that got you there. Dive the fat, right. get rid of the fat, the, fat yeah. and the muscle. But also once you have it, stay on that topic, stay, you got to stay on it and stay focused. What's the difference between a light bulb and a laser beam? They both lie, right? Mm -hmm. but light bulb it'll light up a room that's cool that's good a laser beam will burn a hole through a door mm -hmm. you want to be as focused as a laser beam yeah that's what you want and what's the difference focus yeah oh you know? and so you want to focus your lyric like once you have your idea and your theme stay on it because you only got like three minutes yep. you don't have time for side quests subplots and side stories you don't have time for that boom yeah. you got it like every line going is this aiming at my my theme my hook Every line, is this, every thought, every emotion, is this aiming right at what I'm talking about? Yeah. Not, you have an opportunity to build something in there that does aim at that, and it's going to just give your, give your song that much more energy and power. It's like the one-inch punch, if you've seen that on YouTube. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those crazy martial art guys that can just yeah. knock you down from like an inch away. Just that much focus. Yeah. You don't need the big old wind up. That's right. <laughs> Everything I got is just right there. Bam. So anyway, that's really random reference. No, but it makes sense. I mean, I get that. I get that. I think like sometimes I would do this when I was writing, like, because it does take a little while to sort of get the engines yeah. warmed up. And then I'll say, like, oh, now you're into it. Well, instead of trying to get the song done, because I'm eight lines in, I'm, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. get the first verse done. Yeah. It's all that work, right? No, no, no. Like, keep going. Just keep writing. Like, don't, like, don't even just go just just vomit on the page when you mm -hmm. start getting into that groove and then just go back and kind of pick and choose like put the the basic structure together but mm -hmm. then you're going to be like more on point if you just keep going with mm -hmm. that thought rather than thinking like oh if you're just thinking about the structure already sometimes sometimes, sometimes you just yeah. got to honor the muse when it's there yeah and you got to write yeah. and you just got to write stuff down and then and then you go back and you pick the stuff that's super relevant and super focused okay so at this point, Avengers Endgame is coming out on DVD. Biggest mm -hmm. movie ever. Yeah. Um, biggest box office ever. And they're, they're releasing part of the promo that you start seeing some, like, deleted scenes and stuff. Yeah. Wait, you telling me they filmed stuff that didn't go in the movie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lots of it. <laughs> Sometimes for pacing, you're like, it just kind of messed up the pacing of the scene, and we want to get tight. Yeah. So we took this out. It's interesting. It's not bad. You were letting people see it. It's an interesting character moment or whatever. But it messed with the, the energy of the scene, the mood. Yeah. You gotta, same thing. It's all right to have some deleted scenes. Yeah. But I'm out. Got to get it tight. It's not, it's not wasted. It's not wasted creativity, man. No, it's, it's not. not in the middle. It's, it's where it ends. That's so, right. all right, let's see here. It was interesting. Yeah, Joe Dan, you know, cause he liked a lot of these songs, thankfully. And, and you know, he asked for copy or he already had copies of it. He's like, I don't live with this. And his take on it is, is said, if I like a song, I live with it for a long time. And I try to hate it. If I can't hate it, I can pitch it. 
<laughs> you know? Boom. That should be a t-shirt. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Try to hate it. Try to hate my song. <laughs> if I can't hate it, I can pitch it. <laughs> and so I thought, well, that's a really cool way of looking at it. Like he's, you may get real excited about something right at first, but he's like, okay, but let me live with it and see if this wears well and see if I can find stuff in it that I just don't like and I can hate. If I can't find that, I, then I can, I can confidently pitch it because I can't hate it. It's just that good. It's just that right. I'm like, that's where the bar is, boys and girls. Dear Climber. Like where they can't hate your song. That's what he's not like. It could be, it could be something they could, somebody could do something. With. No, it's like, dude, I tried. I can't hate this. Yeah. I love it. And I can't hate it. All That's right? what you want, you know? And think about this like, as a songwriter, because they, everybody's going to bow up a little bit on that. Right. They're like, every new song comes out as their baby and it's real close. Mm-hmm. And it's really, and, and we've talked before about like the Billy Joel statement where he's like, I love all my children equally. Right. But some of them grow up to be doctors and lawyers and some of them grow up to be delinquents and he's talking about his songs but think about that like as a writer if you've written more than like three songs okay then there's some songs that man you loved it when it first came out and now you're like eh, yeah and so you gotta having that aware first of all realizing that you've come to awareness that you feel like that already about your own songs Mm -hmm. on some of them right some of them are really good some are and then being able to have that awareness of okay so and then just being real with yourself like okay this is how i'm going to raise the bar like this is a mediocre song you know and i mean and part of it's just for him i think as as a he's he's in sales right his job is to get these songs recorded Mm -hmm. he's got to really believe in the product yeah and his worth is bringing in great songs. If he stops bringing in great songs, he stops getting great meetings. Yep. And so he just wants to live with it to make sure it wears well. That's his personal thing. I'm not saying every publisher is that way, but what a great way to look at it going, yeah, because an artist may drive around with this song for a year before they cut it. Is it one that wears well? And again, it's just his personal opinion, yeah. right? It's just him, but that's how he works. I'm like, that's that's really interesting. And by the way, where you, where's the ultimate goal? Where, where do you want that song to go? On the radio? And mm-hmm. people got to drive around with it for more than a year. They got to be there 15 years later, swaying back and forth at the artist concert, mm-hmm. remembering what that song meant to them 15 years ago, and it's still good. Yeah. And so he just lived it to make sure that it's really as strong as it felt the first time he heard it. Yeah. Sometimes you listen to something, you're like, oh, that's awesome. Then you listen to more like, wait, there's a couple things that don't make sense here. Yeah, you know, maybe a couple of the- that because it felt so good that like, oh, well, that, no, that didn't really make sense because they're going to get picked apart. And so he's trying to pick them apart, but if he can't find any, any flies or ingrown hairs on it, all right, I can pitch this because I feel okay. completely confident that it's put together right and it's great. So I just thought that was a cool way of going, yeah, that's the bar. Heck yeah. It makes me feel better. He's pitched some of my stuff. All right. So he said, your genre dictates your lyrics. For example, Southern Gospel can have more of the okay, old way of saying it lyrics than would work in contemporary Christian. Same thing for old school country, new country, because we had a mix of songs, Southern gospel, CCM, country and stuff. And, and there's, if I'm remembering right, one of them was like a Southern gospel thing that just had some old ways of saying some stuff. But that works for that genre. That's for that audience. It's in it for the listener, that audience, you build it for the audience. And so that audience, you can say some of those kind of old ways of saying it, but for like a CCM contemporary Christian thing, it's going to be, it's going to sound too much like grandma. Yeah, it's got to be hip. It's got to be hip. It's got to be hipper. And, oh, okay. But if it were pop, it may sound, even the CCM may sound too uncle <laughs> or what older brother for pop. Yeah. It may not be grandma, but it may just not be. So your genre is going to dictate your lyrics, what you can get away with saying, how you can say it, that sort of thing. And so that's just worth noting, hey, what, what genre am I writing? Is this lyric appropriate for this genre? So Because the, there's definitely some Southern gospel lingo that would not fly in country not fly in ccm and vice versa i mean Mm -hmm. i'm all the time getting told when i'm writing you know i still bring some of my country oomph to my southern gospel writing and people that really know that genre like that's cool that's too cool you're like the johnny in that group like you just you're the black sheep yeah just just like not even like too (laughs) maybe not even like too edgy or too whatever it's just like it's just too cool they're not no you got to now takes take about three notches off that cool. Say it just a little yeah. more plain. There's a certain amount of like, blandness really cool that has to happen here. Poetic and like you got this 
notch it down a little bit. I'm like, all right. <laughs> I want to get in all the cuts in this world, and I've got a couple cuts with you, so I don't trust you. I've been accused yeah. of a lot of things. Being too cool is not one of them. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> on that. Being too cool. Anyway, so, yeah, your genre dictates your lyrics, so be aware of the genre you're, you're aiming at, you're writing for, and make sure your lyrics. And you learn that by studying the genre, right? Mm-hmm. So you got to know what lane you're driving in. Some is a slow, slow lane. Sometimes it's a carpool lane. <laughs> Slower right. traffic, move right. Yeah. <laughs> so, what lane you're in. Here's no, it's great when the course is so hooky, I can hear it only once and sing it back to you. We had one of those in there or more okay. than one of those, but a simple thing. Again, going back to course being prime real estate, is your course catchy? As a lyricist, sometimes I used to be more like, I don't care. Say my brilliant thing I wanted said, which wasn't brilliant at the time, but I thought it was. It was the best I could do. Now I'm much more, it's got to sing. Yeah. Get in your head. We'll make it make sense and we'll make it work where it's good lyrics. But that's a lot of, I mean, what's on radio these days is because the chorus kills and it's so catchy. It gets caught in your head and maybe dumb as a box of rocks. But still going number one. But you're still saying you're going to ride till I can't ride no more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Take me a dance. You know, all that stuff. So it, I'm not saying be dumb, but I'm just saying realize your course is prime real estate. It needs to be something that people want to sing along with. Even yep. if you tell them about something deep and meaningful. It doesn't, like I said, it doesn't have to be dumb, but it needs to be singable. Something people want to hear and get stuck in their heads. All right. So don't skimp on chorus. All right, next. Uh, this was interesting. I thought very worthwhile. So one of the one of the ones that made it through had on the lyric, like option A, option B on the lyric, on one line. You know, they sang option A, is what was on the demo or the work tape that's sent in. But then all, just in the lyric, they had option B, an alternate line. And I've seen that come through, you know, a lot. They're like, well, this line didn't work for you. What about this line? I wasn't quite sure. He said, don't give publishers option A, option B on a lyric. It, it can throw them because it's your song. You need to be confident in your lyric because you're already building in a question mark. Yep. I don't know which one is better. Hmm. I don't know. And all of a sudden you're, you're bringing questions in. Like the whole thing is questionable. now. Exactly. And like, uh, I don't want to make a choice. I don't know. You're the writer. You tell me now there are times I do alternate lyrics because maybe one mentions alcohol. One doesn't because like the song could skew to like a 16 year old. Right. We may have alternate versions like that, but that's because for a very specific reason, Hey, we can pitch this to a 16 year old with this line here, but we can pitch it to a 21 year old. That's doesn't mind talking about a margarita with this line here. Do we got yeah. options? But or also- I can pitch it to like, this could go to country or it could go to contemporary Christian, right? Like with the, sometimes it could be a word or two. Yeah, it could be something like that. Yeah. But that's usually like, I know the publisher or it's my publisher or, but if you're like coming out of the gate, and you're trying to get on someone's radar, like this person had, here's my shot with this publisher, Joe Dan, pick one. Yeah. Love that. Cause that's, that's not going to make you break your song. That one line probably. And if it is something that's that far off where it kills the song, like, I don't really don't like that song. You go, I got an alternate, but odds are, if you're sending it in, it's not going to make or break that song. That's right. If you're not that's sure right. if they'd be like, I love it except for this one thing. Odds are, and then you can then you can fix it. So don't don't start with that question mark. And, oh, and think about it, he here. he already said that to, to some of the people. He's like, hey man, fix this one thing and shoot it back to me. Yeah, because like, so like, you, you've already got option B like loaded. So you yeah, literally, exactly. you're not even off the phone yet, and it's in his email. Like, here's the new version, man. Tell yeah, me what exactly. You're and it's yeah. different, and it's good, and that might be just what it takes, right? Yeah. So you just need to pick one, go with that, and then if it's strong enough, you'll start a conversation. And you'd be like, hey, there's also this thing if you want to. But less likely to start a conversation if you're not confident in your lyrics. So I thought that was cool. Just nuts and bolts, sending stuff to publishers. Yeah, don't make them think too much. Just give them something they're going to love it or they aren't. But that one line is probably not going to make the difference. Yep. Pick one. Be a writer. All right. That's pretty much what I wanted to share. Just some of the notes I took. I mean, there's a lot more. If you are if you send a song in for that one, I hope you watch the replay. <laughs> it was a, it's available for about two weeks afterwards. So I'd also say when you see this up in the climb community, because we'll post about this when this episode goes live, if you were there, if you saw the replay, what other nuggets did you take from it? Drop those in. Or, you know, what's your take on some of these, these pearls of wisdom from Joe Dan Cornette? 
I'd love to get continue the conversation in the climb community or in the songwriting pro Facebook group or wherever you might see it on the blog or wherever. What stood out to you that you heard him say? We had about, I don't know, over 200 people that had access to the replay. So I'd like to hear from you. What was yeah. it for you? But also, if you want a, a chance to send in your song to a publisher, guess what? We got another one coming up because we do this on a regular basis. Next up, we have publisher Matt Lindsay. So music publisher, he works in mostly in country and bluegrass, uh, but he's been around for like 30 plus years. He's gotten cuts by all kinds of artists. I mean, Garth Brooks and on down, Bonnie Raitt, all kinds of craziness, Willie Nelson. So he's nice. legit. He runs Matt Lindsay Music. We recently had him for a Know the Pro event in Freddie. So you can, if you check that out and you're like, yeah, Matt's a cool dude. I like what he has to say, but well, here's your chance to get your song in front of him. And so it's a play for publisher events coming up. The deadline to enter your song is September 1st for this go around. You can get all the details by downloading my free ebook, Think Like a Pro Songwriter. It's at giftfrombrent.com. What that does, it gets you on the Songwriting Pro Insiders list. And so I'll send you all the, all the details there. But it's on sale now uh, and will be until September 1st for this go around. But if you're listening in the future, go to giftfrombrent.com, still download that book, get on the insiders list and you'll know about the next one that's coming up because we try to do these every three months. These come up because I want to connect you to the pros. That's right. I've really been pleased with these just because pressure on me to, to go through these 200 plus songs and find 10 that I think, oh my gosh, I hope we don't sit here on a bunch of duds for the publisher, but it's been nice. The last several ones, people have been like, okay, these are really good. Like consistently, like, these are really good. Good job, Brent, picking the songs. I'm like, yes, <laughs> because yeah. I want to give you guys the best chance to win. So I want to pick the songs that have the best chance to win. And it works better for everybody if, if the songs are strong. So send in your good stuff, one thing, because I can't play it if you don't send it. But also, yeah, we're doing some relevant stuff over here. And yeah, Joe Dam, there are a lot of people. He's like, call me next time you're in town. There's tweak this, tweak that. Send it to Brent. He'll send it on to me. I want to hear it or send it to me or I'm downloading it. You people have been getting meetings out of this, follow-ups. So it's legit. It's a real chance. It's an at-bat with a publisher. And if you got the goods, a guy like Matt knows what to do with it. That's right. And you can keep in mind that it's, it's, it's not about that one song. They're looking right. for songwriters. They songwriters are. is what they want. So It's a, it's a, it's a door a opener, not a deal closer, but it can be a heck of a door opener if you, if you got the goods. That's right. All right, guys. Well, join the client community if you haven't done so already. Prescribe. I was going to say prescribe. Subscribe to the podcast. Hey, you know, you- it will cure a multitude of ills. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts so you get every episode. Leave a five-star rating and review and tell somebody about it. If this was prescribe helpful. Prescribe it to somebody. Prescribe. There you go. Prescribe it to somebody. Prescribe and prescribe. <laughs> And put it on your social media. Let them know about it. Let them know what helped you. That's that's what we're here for. This podcast exists because we want you to win. So keep on climbing. And we'll see you at the top. <laughs>